Now, let me tell you, this is not a video about trees. What it is, is about me telling you about a concept and how that concept applies to me and how knowledge of this concept going forward is something that I'm going to have to bear in mind very carefully in order to make sure that I'm able to do the things I want to do in life, that I'm able to get what I want to get from life. Hey guys, how's it going? Aura Pampa here and today I wanted to talk to you about the bonsai tree. Bonsai trees are basically miniature versions of big trees but in pots, in vases. So imagine you had like a big orange tree, right? You know how it can spread out and be beautiful or, or an apple tree. But instead of having such a big one in the middle of your garden, you can have it in a little tiny pot. So literally you have a miniature version of the tree. It's something that has been developed in Chinese and Japanese culture where you can create really beautiful miniature versions of trees. Now, when you think about it, it's about the environment the tree is potted in, right? And the way it is cultivated. So if I apply that to my life, or to, if you apply it to your life, it's basically about noticing how your environment shapes the kind of person you are, shapes the kind of things you end up doing in life, and ultimately affects what you get out of life, what you end up seeing as being the summary of your life. Let me explain a bit further. So a child who grows up in a situation or in a family where they're very loved and cared for and they had their needs met is less likely to be as afraid as another child who grew up in situations where they weren't sure where the next meal was going to come from. That other child is likely to be more um, afraid of the future, afraid of some things happening and that might end up being the thing that drives him. But then beyond that, your environment, what people are like within the environment you find yourself in can also impact even how high you decide to jump. They say if you are surrounded by four wise people, you're likely to be the fifth wise person. But the vice versa also applies. If you're around four fools all the time, it's quite likely you might end up being the fifth. So just bear that in mind. But then there are some environments that constrict um, people, you know, so if you grow up in an environment where aiming high was not necessarily celebrated, academic achievements weren't particularly, you know, they don't, you know, the people around you didn't inspire you to achieve more. And for example, a work colleague I once worked with mentioned that within her family and her community, most people she knew were salaried workers. So never aspired to own a business, but instead they aspired to just be the baker, the shoemaker, the, um, and not necessarily owning those companies or owning those businesses, by the way, but actually working in those businesses or working for a supermarket or a hotel, that sort of thing. Whereas when a policy change happened, so a change through the environment external to her, so the government, um, this is in the UK now, the government had created a policy which encouraged more students from lower economic um, backgrounds to go to university. Once she went to university and met people from different walks of life, she knew that she couldn't go back to where she lived. She couldn't raise her children in the community where she lived because she realized that community was limited. And if she wasn't careful, her children would be limited in her view. She was lucky that she was born at a time when those policies came into play and then she was able to benefit from them. But again, notice the environment changed. It wasn't necessarily her who changed something. It was the environment that changed. But actually, on the other hand, you can change your environment as well. So I thought I'd give you a few practical examples of situations where I've felt this, what I say, bonsai effect, where I felt my environment limited me. Now, let me explain something about the bonsai tree, though. The bonsai trees look cute. They look beautiful, but their growth is stunted. So they're there, they're looking pretty, things seem to be okay, but they're not achieving the level of growth that they're expected to, or their, or their seed um, is capable of achieving because of the environment they find themselves because of the way they've been potted and, and grown and take and tendered to. They've been tended to in such a way as to look beautiful but not necessarily achieve the great potential. We know that it's the same seed that made that tree, like, let's say that miniature apple tree for example, could be the same seed that could grow into a huge, huge tree that would provide shade to many animals, that would provide a lot of fruits, that would just be magnificently beautiful. And yet, it is beautiful, but only in its small size. It, had been, it has been made to be small and not achieve the things it could potentially achieve. 
Now, how have I experienced this if I bring this to my life or how I am just in the world? I would say there have been situations, for example, um, with work where I had to leave certain environments in order to grow. So one of the earlier jobs that I did when I was um, a lot younger, just starting in my career, I finally got into a job that was going well for me. And my boss, God bless her, she taught me a lot of things, but very quickly I superseded the things that she taught me. And sometimes I would even go way beyond what she had asked just because I was very passionate about what I was doing. I loved the fact that I was learning and able to grow. But it got to a point where I knew I'd learned all I could in that role. And if I didn't move, I would literally be stagnant. Yes, I'd look like I'm doing well, maybe hitting my targets, maybe exceeding them sometimes, but not by very much because I'd gotten to a point where I had gone to a level of comfort and I'd be able to I'd been able to achieve what I needed to do in that role. And I knew that if I stayed there, I could get too comfortable and then it becomes hard to move. Have you ever sat in those really comfy chairs where you just sit down and then you just, ooh, you just get very comfortable? And then getting out of them is so tricky and so difficult because you're just so comfortable and you're so sunk in that it's quite difficult to step out. That's the kind of feeling sometimes I have gotten in different places of work where I then realize, okay, all right, it's time for a shift. It's time to actually find a new kind of challenge, something to make you, um, you know, do something that scares you a little bit, something that you're not completely sure of because in that level of discomfort is where growth comes in. So for me, that happened with work a few times where I got to a certain level or a certain stage and I felt, okay, I needed a change. And sometimes that change was to change to another company where I'd get more responsibility. In other cases, it has meant moving to different jobs and different kinds of work completely. But because I knew that, okay, I needed a new environment, sometimes I had to change. And sometimes changing environment may not necessarily mean changing jobs. It may also be changing the circumstances around your job. So being more vocal to um, my bosses, for example, and saying, okay, I need this kind of experience for the things I want to do career-wise. I remember having a conversation with one of my bosses one time, and I told him, look, I need management experience. This is because I also know where I'm personally heading. The company may have an idea of developing its employees for a particular role, which is fine. But I know what I'm aiming for in life. And I knew that for where I'm looking to get to, the level at which I'm looking to play at, I need this management experience, experience learning on the job, experience just managing people and understanding how to deal with people and work through people to achieve things. But he said, okay, look, he would love to give me the management experience, but quite frankly, there's no one to manage. Um, the team was a very lean team and we didn't really have, um, we weren't looking to grow the team as such, but there were opportunities to manage. For example, when we had a contractor come on board um, to work on a project with us for a few months, my boss gave me that opportunity to actually manage that person. And that was quite helpful for me because there are some things I learned, just interpersonal skills, how you chase up on people to make sure that they're delivering on the work and setting targets, that sort of thing. So for me, I grew in that, but then I also knew that okay, I need more experience. And so, I mean, that amongst many other um, reasons also because I felt that I needed to start working towards my life purpose as opposed to just working to earn money that I eventually decided to leave that job. I've left my job, my full-time salaried role. I've been out of that for about a year now. Well, not quite a year, not quite a year. I've got maybe another three, four months before it. I hit the year mark. And it's been an interesting change. A lot of things have changed. I've been focusing more my PhD on running a few startups on my voiceover business as well. But then I feel like in this period, I've grown a lot. Now, it has been a period of discomfort. I'm through the businesses and, businesses and other things I'm doing. I'm not necessarily earning as much as I was earning when I was a salaried worker, but that's okay because I know I'm in the right environment to help me get to where I want to get to. I'm working on startups. I have some location freedom, which means I can work from different places, which also means that I can then do other things that I'm more passionate about. So again, sometimes you have to change your circumstances, your environment. And if you can't uproot yourself to another environment, it might mean changing things within your current environment to suit what you need to get to. Another way I felt the bonsai effect is with location. So I mentioned I have location freedom at the moment, which I basically define or I've seen defined as um, the ability to work from different locations as long as maybe you ha you're able to connect to your colleagues and so you can work from different countries or different cities, that sort of thing. Um, this has become more popular, particularly in the past two, three years with COVID-19 and 
um, the pandemic and people having to isolate and not travel as much in order to limit the spread of the virus. So the idea of working from home or working remotely has become more mainstream and more acceptable. However, this is something I've thought of getting for the longest time. I mean, longest time. I read a book called uh, The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss as a teenager, and I thought to myself, yeah, that location freedom, that's what I want. I want to be able to work from anywhere in the world as long as I have an internet connection and my laptop and a phone and I'm good. I could be working on a beach, sipping some pina colada as well as uh, working and dealing with clients in different places. That was something I aimed for and I finally got it last year. That has then given me location free freedom, but then the question is what am I doing with it? Right now I'm actually recording from a different location. As you can see, the background is quite different. I've traveled to Nigeria at the moment. I came for a family event, but then it was the catalyst that made me think, you know what, I'm going to try and explore Africa because a lot of things I want to do going forward is within the African continent. But going back to the bonsai effect of bonsai situation, I do feel that the things I want to do, particularly to do with Africa and just in general, I feel when I'm on the African continent, my ability to do things just goes up. I'm not necessarily talking about um, productivity. I know Af Africa has its different problems, whether it's not having uh, uninterrupted power supply or whether it's just different challenges. Obviously, it's hotter here than it is in the UK, the different things like that. However, just I think mindset wise, just the environment for me, weirdly enough, I feel more empowered and more enabled to do things. I feel like I can be more creative and actually see problems and think, you know what, I can solve that one. I can solve that problem. And I can't explain it fully yet other than knowing that changing environment does wonders for me. So moving from the UK down, down here um, has been fantastic for me. I'm already thinking of more ideas and things that I can accomplish. And I don't, I mean, not necessarily just stay in Nigeria. I'm thinking of going to a few other African countries just to explore and learn about those countries, those cultures, their problems, and where I can bring solutions. So again, changing environment for me is doing wonders. It's making me realize that, okay, I don't have to be this stunted, beautiful, but miniature version of my potential. I can actually change location and grow to my full potential. And that's what I intend to do. So if you take nothing from this video, the one thing I'd like you to remember is that your environment can affect the things you do. Um, beyond there, there is some level of personal agency, by the way, meaning that you have the power to make some decisions that change things for yourself. But also the environment you're in may be an enabling factor or a disabling factor. The question is, what are you going to do about that? If you find that you're in a situation, whether it's a family situation or a work situation or just a life situation that isn't working for you, are you just going to stay there and accept it? Or are you going to consider changing your environment to ensure that you are in the best place for you and that you are able to just be in an environment that lets you grow to your fullest potential? I'd like you to consider that. And if you're thinking of, okay, all right, what are the ways in which I can change my environment? Maybe I can't travel right now, or I can't move to a different country. What can I change? There are a few things you can do. First of all, speak up. If you want something, speak up. Something a friend recently told me was, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. And I was like, huh. I mean, I think I've always believed that to some extent, but just articulating it like that just was like a light bulb for me. A lot of things that I want to achieve, I literally just speak it out and tell people I'm interested in this. I didn't, even when I came um, down here, I didn't necessarily have everything planned. I just knew that when I come down here, I'm gonna use this opportunity to travel across Africa. And you know what I've done? I've just literally vocalized that to everybody I meet. Oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. When are you coming back? Well, when are you going back to the UK rather? I'll say, well, uh, that's to be discussed, but I'm looking to travel to other countries and this is where I'm thinking of going. And they're like, oh, before you know it, people are linking me here and there to other people. It's just been fantastic. And some plans are un unfolding. Hopefully I'll be able to share them on YouTube as they come along. But yeah, if you need to change your environment, do so. If you need to change things within your environment to make sure that you are better placed to actually achieve the things you want to do, do so. I don't think you'll regret it. So there's one more thing I forgot to mention about the bonsai effect and changing environment. You also want to look out for 
when you are actually in a great environment when you can thrive. It's not just about moving each time because you feel like one way isn't serving you and then you're just going to jump ship. Sometimes and many times that might work, but actually it might also be appreciating the environment you have so far. For example, having good family support, which can then be a springboard for where you want to go, or being in an organization that maybe is giving you, may not give you everything, but for the meantime, it's giving you something you need to grow. For example, if they're able to pay for training that you need, or you're able to do a certain role that you can grow in. So that's just something I just thought to mention before uh, I go and leave this video, is that just bear in mind that when you're talking about the bonsai effect, don't just think about jumping ship all the time. See and just consider your environment, the whole environment, and understand whether you're actually in a good environment to thrive, or whether you do need that change. All right, back to the video. There are two more things I can tell you that I feel will be very helpful in changing your environment. One thing you could look at is your weak ties. Now, what are weak ties? I got this from a book called The Defining Decade. I believe it was written by a lady called Meg Jay. And basically it talks about using your 20s in such a way as to set yourself up for greatness in your 30s, 40s and beyond. Now, one thing that was mentioned in that book amongst the many very, very useful um, insights there was the idea of weak ties. So weak ties are people you're not necessarily so close to. However, they may be the stepping stone towards where you need to get to. So for example, it might be, so it might be your cousin's friend's dad, for example, who works at a company that you're interested in working for or learning more about. You can actually leverage those relationships or maybe people you've met once in the past and not really gotten to know very well. You could actually leverage those relationships and actually speak to people again Closed mouth is a closed destiny. Speak to people, keep telling them what you're interested in. And don't be afraid to reach out to people, even if you don't know them very well, you know, and try to make it a, uh, a relationship that it's mutually beneficial. It won't always be possible, but try to do that where possible. But yeah, feel free to reach out to people and see how they might be able to help you in getting to where you want to go. And sometimes all you have to do is ask. You'd be surprised what would await you if you just opened your mouth and asked and articulated the things that you wanted to achieve. Another thing that actually helps is knowing what you want to do, what you want to do in life, what you want to aim for. Now, you may not have a clear idea of everything you want to do and plan your life out from A to Z. That may not be the case. However, having an idea of where you're aiming towards just helps to give direction. I was speaking to a cousin of mine one day and she's in university, she's about to graduate and she said, you know, I don't think I want to do the usual nine to five. I want to run a business. I'm particularly interested in running a food business. I said, okay, that's fine. When you want something, you work towards it and you start taking decisions in line with the thing that you want. So I told her, if you want that, that's that's fine. You may have some economic realities, which mean that you might start off doing a nine to five job and then move into doing some food business. That's fine. But maybe your decisions about the jobs you take on will be very deliberate. Now, rather than just go for any job, you may choose to intern with a food business, whatever food business you're interested in, so that you can learn more about the business, not just your role as an intern within there, but actually how the business works from the inside, because being an intern gives you that privileged position to be able to see how things are working. So you're there not just learning your job, you're learning about the job. Okay, who? what are the other roles that make this business successful? Who is needed here to make things progress? That sort of thing. So you can be deliberate. I have another video um, somewhere on YouTube talking about the Odyssey plan. If you just search for that, you'll find it. And basically in there, it talks about um, thinking of what you would do if money and people's opinions were no object, were nothing you had to consider. What would your life look like if that was, if that was out of the picture and you could just do whatever you want? Once you decide what you want to do with your life, even if, like I said, even if it's a bit vague and it's just a vague idea, it gives you a sense of direction and then you can start doing things that are all in service to that. Now, a changing environment, like I said, could also mean just changing the people you hang out with. Remember, if you are if you hang out with four wise people, you're likely to be the fifth. So it might be changing your environment to, to make more friends who are thinking along the same lines as you. And it might be making friends online or it might be making friends in person through networking events, that sort of thing, whatever it is. Once you decide what you want to do, you can then start changing your environment, the things that you surround yourself with, the people you speak to, the books you read, the content you consume online, all to be in service to the direction you want to go. And in so doing, you change your environment 
and you end up changing the course of your life as a result. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I hope to see you watching my next video. All right, take care and don't forget your environment can have an impact on what you do. So look at your current environment and ask yourself, is it helping me or is it hindering me? If it's hindering you, you might want to change a few things. All right, take care. Bye. See you in the next video.